Suburban Sentinel here, taking a much needed break from my constant battle to keep my yard equipment up and running. I don't know what it is, but I seem to have the absolute worst luck with two-stroke engines. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or I'm stupid. Or, ah, they drive me crazy. Require more maintenance and repairs per operating hour than I could have possibly imagined. But I digress. Today's subject is prepping, specifically one of the four major pillars of prepping, and that is knowledge, skills, and abilities. I will leave the link to the introductory video on the four pillars of prepping in the comments section below. So let's get to it. Knowledge, skills, and abilities, or in other words, what should a prepper know how to do or accomplish? Well, first, in my opinion, there are some core skills or things that everybody should know how to do with a reasonable degree of competence and confidence. First and foremost on the list of core skills is basic survival aptitudes, and that is being able to do such things as start a fire in almost any condition. Being able to find and purify water such that it's potable. Building a shelter in almost any conceivable condition that you're likely to run into. And finally, signaling for help. That is the various means and conventions of distress signaling. Other core skills. A prepper or anybody else should know some basic first aid. In addition, map reading and orienteering. I know the whole world is caught up in the GPS phenomenon and certainly can't blame those of you who grew up in the post-GPS era for not knowing how to do reading of maps and charts and using a compass but we can't always count on GPS being available. Firearms handling and marksmanship. In my opinion, just about every prepper of age should be reasonably competent with a handgun, a rifle, and a shotgun. In addition to those core skills, there are a myriad of skills and abilities which could be helpful to preppers and those who are not preppers alike. The building trades, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, farming and gardening, mechanical skills, which I seem to be slightly lacking in today, uh, organization and management. Depending upon your circumstances, there could be just about any skill you can imagine that could be of use in an adverse situation. Now, no one person is going to be able to do it all. But keep those useful skills in the back of your head because even if you do not have those skills and do not have the time or inclination to develop them, you may know someone who already does have those abilities. I'd like to take some time and focus on some skills and abilities that are often overlooked in the prepping community, but could be as helpful, if not more helpful, than other technical skills, such as being mechanical or reading maps or whatever. So let's delve into a few of those. First and foremost, negotiation and consensus building. It's more likely that you and your neighbors will be able to cooperate in order to either survive and or thrive in an adverse situation. For instance, it could be of the utmost importance to be able to hammer out an agreement with other people to share resources and labor. For example, when it comes to guarding property, you or anybody else will not be able to stand guard 24-7 by themselves for an extended period. 
Dividing the labor among several or many sets of eyes is the only way to roll. Another important skill, networking. As we previously talked about, no one person can do it all. If you have a healthy network of friends and associates, chances are you will have a more broad range of skill sets that you can use in an emergency situation. Another very useful skill for preppers is intelligence gathering. Now I'm not talking about the spy versus spy James Bond kind of thing, but just getting access to basic information can be very, very useful depending on the situation. For example, here in New England, when Hurricane Sandy hit last year, uh, my wife and I set ourselves up as the unofficial morning coffee and donut spot for the entire neighborhood. Besides being able to help our neighbors, we also had access to all the little bits of information that different people knew. If so-and-so's brother or cousin worked for the power company, we had a better idea of when we could expect power back, and we had a few things taken care of earlier than otherwise would have been based on that shared information. Some final thoughts on knowledge, skills, and abilities. I think it's very important that each person know their limitations. A little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. I don't know how many cases I've seen where people who knew a little bit about electrical work burned down their homes when they did something stupid because they didn't know exactly what they're doing. The devil was in the details. It's important to know how and when to get either professional or at least learned assistance. And you do that by knowing your limitations and again by accessing the people in your network if something is over your head. Finally, be useful. Your chances of surviving and thriving in a community are much better if you provide some valuable service, knowledge, or insight. Of course, there are people who are kind and helpful to others without any exchange, but it's always good to be able to reciprocate. So that's my little primer on knowledge, skills, and abilities. Now I'm gonna go back to these gosh darn two-stroke engines that bedevil me. Thanks for watching. This is the Suburban Sentinel. Please thumbs up and subscribe if you like what you see. Questions and enlightening comments are always welcome. Please prep and be safe, everybody.